Welcome back to the movie recap. Today's movie will be a 2016 Polish war drama film titled Hatred. So sit back, relax and enjoy the video. The movie begins one night in the province of Wolhynia, where a group of female Polish chants as they present Hila Glowaka, a Polish bride, to Vasil Huk, a Ukrainian groom. Zasha Glowaka, Hila's sister, cheerily teases her boyfriend, Petro, a Ukrainian boy, while they are chanting. During the wedding ceremony, Vasil asks for a blessing from Hila's parents. Then, Vasil and Hila happily marry in front of their beloved ones. At night by the river, Zasha and Petro make love. Petro pledges to only love Zasha for the rest of his life, Zasha smiles. Sadly, Maciej Skiba, a wealthy Polish widow, desires to marry Zasha, a lot younger than her. He asks permission from Zasha's father in exchange for 10 acres, two pigs, a cow, and a horse. They make a toast and come to an agreement. As Zasha returns home, her parents immediately break the news about her arranged marriage to Mache. She angrily flounces out of the house afterward. The next day, Zasha weepingly bids farewell to Hila. Then, Hila and Vasil depart to their new home while the women of their village continue to chant ritual songs. Shortly after, Zasha and Mache get married. Then, however, Mache, a Polish soldier, has to depart on a mission against German and Russian invaders. After that, the invasion of Poland occurs. Then, the war erupted between Polish army and the Nazi Soviet forces. The Polish army drove back the Nazi Soviet forces yet received a lot of casualties, deaths, and escapees. A day later, the Polish army returns home individually while Maciej and three other soldiers depart together. As the sky gets dark, they rest in an abandoned house for a while. While resting, Maciej hears a loud gunfire and observes the happenings from a distance. He shockingly sees his comrades getting tortured by Ukrainian terrorists. One of them loudly screams as a terrorist remorselessly peels off his skin. Maciej remains hiding as he's unable to fight the terrorists all on his own. Morning comes, and Maciej sees his three comrades dead with visible flesh and blood all over their bodies. He frighteningly escapes returning to Zasha and his children from his first wife. After a while, Maciej, in a Ukrainian disguise, returns home to his family. Zasha prepares their lunch while Maciej's mother foul-mouthed her in front of Maciej and his children. Maciej defends her and tells her to ignore his mother. At night, as Maciej and Zasha's about to make love, Zasha breaks the news of her pregnancy to him. Maciej is overjoyed. After some time, Zasha knocks on Petro's door and gets yelled at by Olga Hypina, Petro's mother. She begs her to see Petro, yet, she drives her away instead. Petro sees her from his window but remains inside as it's forbidden to see her. Later on, the presence of Petro in Maciej's house surprises Zasha. They lovingly kiss and make love while Maciej is not around. Meanwhile, Ukrainians and Jews show a lot of resentment towards Polish authorities for favoring their own kind in Volhynia. So, they work hand in hand to kick Polish authorities and make the Polish deportation happen. After some time, Russian forces arrive, and the villagers welcome them wholeheartedly by offering them vodkas to drink. Then, Ukrainian and Jewish rebels headed by Stepan Suma cooperated with the Soviet authorities to make their desires happen. Consequently, the replacement of Polish authorities with Soviet authorities takes place. However, they force the Polish citizens to follow new protocols and conditions. In addition, the Polish citizens would be considered counter-revolutionaries if they disobeyed them. Meanwhile, Zasha and Petro are conversing about leaving the village together. Maciej overhears their conversation and learns that Zasha's unborn child is Petro's and not his. At Maciej's house, Maciej gets drunk and hardly punches Zasha to knock her out on the floor. Then, a continuous pounding on their door pauses their fight. Finally, the Russian forces uninvitingly entered their residence to forcibly drive them away from their own house. As a part of the massive deportation of Polish citizens, Maciej's family is sent to a railway station heading to Siberia, where the Polish will do forced labor. Inside the train car, Maciej's family and a crowd of Polish citizens are frighteningly departing their province. However, just in time, Petro arrives to bribe the Russians with the vodkas he stole earlier. He takes Zasha and Maciej's children to return to their village. Unfortunately, Maciej and his mother fail to leave the car as the Russian soldiers force them back in. At an inopportune moment, Zasha is about to give birth. Petro swiftly brings her to his house to make his mother deliver their baby. Petro exits the house while Zasha is screaming in pain while giving birth. Afterward, Zasha's son comes out healthy and alive. Outside Petro's house, a drunk Russian soldier arrives. He questions Petro about the vodka he stole but he denies the accusation. Then, with his unlawful action, the Russian soldier shoots him in the head. He dies immediately. Two years later, 
Zasha, her son, and two stepchildren return to Maché's house and notice how untidy it is. So they start cleaning, organizing, and repainting the house. Suddenly, the Nazi forces arrive at their village after they have conquered Volhynia. Afterward, a Nazi officer yanks on a Russian Jewish official and remorselessly hangs her in a rope for public execution. Feared, the atmosphere in the village becomes silent as the villagers watch the execution take place. Then, the Nazi commander orders them to point to the location of the Jews in their village. Days pass and Jews are publicly executed by the Nazis. The Nazis force their entry from house to house to shoot at every Jew they find. Sympathetically, Zasha and other Ukrainians agree to hide some Jews in safe places. But, then, a Nazi officer threatens to execute Zasha once they find her hiding Jews secretly. At night, Zasha hides an old Jew couple in their barn. Unfortunately, her father discovers she has been keeping Jews with her all this time. He furiously tells her to send them away or else he'll bring them directly to the Germans. One morning, a Nazi officer enters the barn and sees Zasha. He attempts to rape her, but an empty bucket falls on his head. He checks on the upper deck of the barn and notices signs of Jews. He calls on the attention of his comrades to ransack the whole barn but fails to see the old Jew couple. Ahead, the old Jew couple manages to escape but gets cornered by an opportunistic Ukrainian. The couple begs him for a place to stay for the whole winter in exchange for his hidden possessions. Cold days pass and the old Jew's wife dies. Her husband dies next after the opportunistic Ukrainian kills him when he discovers that the possession he promised is fake. After some time, Mache returns to his house after escaping forced labor in Siberia. His family updates him on what he has missed for the past two years. He learns that other villages keep stealing livestock from them. At night, he rests at his barn to guard their livestock. As expected, a thief attempts to steal a hen, and he immediately wakes up to chop the thief's hand with an axe. The following day, Mache secures his house with padlocks and chains to protect his family. Zasha tells him to be careful but remains arrogant. Finally, the thief arrives at their house to present a bucket with Mache's head. Zasha falls to the ground as she learns the thief beheads her husband for revenge. Two years later, Zasha accidentally meets an injured young Polish Polish man in her barn. She brings him into the house to treat his wound. After some time, the young Polish man's wounds healed. But then, he discovers that the Nazis come to Zasha's house to rape Zasha from time to time. So he decides to prolong his stay in their house to protect her and her children. One morning, the young Polish man heads to his friend's house from a distant village. They chatter about Ukrainian military organization that carries out terrorist attacks against Polish and Ukrainian collaborators. In the market, the young Polish man overhears other Polish men chattering about the promise of their Ukrainian neighbors to notify them in case of danger. The following day, the Polish villagers gather to tackle the soon attack of Ukrainians. The young Polish man persuades them to prepare for a battle beforehand. Yet, they remain unconcerned and calm as their Ukrainian neighbors promise to inform them if Ukrainian terrorists are nearby. Later at night, the beginning of gruesome murder and torture of the Polish happens. First, a Polish man, frighteningly captured by the Ukrainian terrorists, gets beheaded remorselessly. Then, the Ukrainian terrorists devise a plan to murder all Polish in their next targeted village. The next day, Branka, Maciej's sister and one of the escapees, arrives at Zasha's village to reside in the meantime. She emotionally informs Zasha of their town being invaded by Ukrainians who slaughter her family and neighbors. Luckily, she manages to escape together with one of her children. Sometime later at night, the Polish young man is tasked to guide the home army members on their meeting with the Ukrainian insurgent army, UIA. Zasha forbids him from leaving, yet, he departs anyways. After that, the young Polish man and other members of the home army arrive at Kostyk's village. Two of their members meet with the UIA unarmed to negotiate peacefully. As the armed UIA arrives at the meeting place, they surround Captain Zygmunt Kremiejewski, one of the members of the home army. They capture him and mercilessly dismember his body by horse. Then, they begin searching for other home army members in Kostyk's. Subsequently, the young Polish man hastily flees to escape the UIA chasing him and two other members of the home army. He continues to abscond from them as he sees his comrades die from the shooting. A day later, he arrives at the ongoing mass in a Polish church. Unfortunately, the UIA stormed inside the church and ruthlessly stabbed the Polish citizens with an axe, bombed them with a grenade, and killed all of them, including the young Polish man. Meanwhile, Stipan knocks on Zasha's door to deceivingly inform her not to fear the Ukrainians as no massacre will occur in their village. The Ukrainian pledges to a truce with Polish, he added. Sharp-witted, Zasha still put herself and her family to their barn to make their escape easier once the attack takes place. At night, Zasha, 
Branka, and their children grow apprehensive as the Ukrainian terrorists head towards their barn. Then, they swiftly flee as the barn gets lit by the terrorists. As they escape, Branka panically runs ahead of Zasha. Still, the terrorist corners and cruelly stabs her with an axe, then gauge her eyes with a sharp object. Later on, Franken, Zasha's stepson, is forcibly wrapped around grass straw by the terrorists. They burn him into flames while Zasha weepingly watches him from afar. Then, while carrying her youngest son, Zasha nervously attempts to escape the village but gets knocked down by Stipan. Morning comes, and Zasha dazedly wakes up in the street of their village. She surveys her surroundings and grows dumbstruck to see slaughtered bodies everywhere. After a while, she heads to Petro's house to hide. Olga grows surprised by her reappearance and hides her from the terrorists heading to her house. Afterward, she apprises her to swiftly depart to Hila's house in a safe and faraway village. As Zasha tirelessly travels for miles on foot, she comes across a Ukrainian terrorist. As the terrorists are about to slaughter her, armed Nazis pass by, and she hastily walks with them. The Nazis confusingly stare at her for walking with them. Afterward, they are welcomed by numerous dead Polish bodies on the road. Consequently, the Nazis bring Zasha with them to a safer place. They part ways as Zasha is heading in a different direction. On the way to Hila's house, Zasha steals Ukrainian clothes to disguise herself as Ukrainian. In doubt, the UIA corners her and makes her pray the Lord's Prayer to prove that she is Ukrainian. Luckily, they believe her and let her pass through. At last, she arrives at Hila's house. Luckily, Vasil, Hila's husband, is friendly to Polish people. Afterward, Hila hides Zasha and her son in their barn. The next day, Vasil's brother arrives. As the killings of the Polish become a mass movement among Ukrainians, Vasil's brother convinces him to murder Hila, if not, he'll take her down himself. But, deeply in love, Vasil dislikes the idea of the movement, so he kills his brother instead. At night, Hila's family gets attacked by a Polish resistance group who seek revenge on Ukrainians. First, they condemn Helena for living with Vasil, a Ukrainian. So, they mercilessly slaughter her newborn child, behead her and kill Vasil. Weepingly, Zasha sees everything and flees the barn immediately. Days pass and Zasha realizes that no one is to be trusted anymore, including her own kind. So, she lies in the forest, awaiting her death to come. Fortuitously, a young, blonde man sees her son and places him in his horse-drawn cart. Then, carries Zasha in his cart next. The movie ends when the three of them pass by the Nazi checkpoint and make their way through the fields of Volhynia. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.